Greetings, this is Bob Thompson with the Salt Lake County Watershed Planning and Restoration Program, providing another update to the 2023 snowpack. This is released April 26th, 2023. In this picture, you can see the snowpack at the parking lot at Alta is very significant. Where we stand statewide hovers between high 300% and low 200% of average uh, for this time of year and those are pretty significant numbers and to break those out kind of basin by basin first the jordan ray the jordan basin has significantly above average snowpack for this time of year uh, the 2023 snowpack for aggregated sites is well over 40 inches of snow water equivalent and as a reminder the snow water equivalent is how much water resides in the existing snowpack now to look at this station by station, we'll start at the north end of Salt Lake County at lower elevation in City Creek at Lewis Meadow. Uh, this site's at about 6,700 feet, and you can see that there's well over 35 inches of water in the snowpack there, which is significantly above the maximum value that we've observed. Uh, those values were observed back in 2011, which was a, an amazing snow year. So we're waiting an anxiously for that snowpack to start melting. Uh, moving further up City Creek Canyon to a higher elevation at Lookout Peak, again, 2023 values have exceeded the maximum observed values, and uh, we're again waiting for those that snowpack to start to melt. Parley Summit is a similar story. Parley Summit is one of those snow tail sites that has a long history of measuring the water content in snowpack, and you can see that 2020. 2011 was a very big snow year. 1984 was kind of our banner year, and 2023 has surpassed the snowpack in 1984. <clears throat> big Cottonwood on the south facing or north side of the canyon, there's a snow tail site at the Mill D drainage, and this snow tail site has shown significantly above average snowpacks for this time of year. Um, this is something that really needs to start melting soon uh, if we want to avoid having a, a runoff that gets a bit out of control. Big Cottonwood at Brighton, similar story, maybe not as, as pronounced as Mildy, but Brighton is showing uh, above max value snowpack for this time of year. And Little Cottonwood at Snowbird, similar story, but not as pronounced. 2023 is higher than traditional snowpacks, uh, but in big snow years, snow tends to accumulate for a longer period of time at the top of Little Cottonwood Canyon, so it might take a little while before we know what's going to happen with this snowpack. But in the interim, we're looking at the seven-day forecast. This is the precipitation forecast, and for the next seven days, Utah, at least the Salt Lake Valley, should stay mostly dry. Very little precipitation is forecast in that time. Uh, which means we may actually have a warming spell and that warming spell could really start to do some work on parts of the snowpack and I'll explain that in just a moment. The monthly precipitation forecast released at the end of March shows we were looking at likely slightly above average precipitation for the month of April and for the most part that's held true. And the seasonal precipitation outlook released just last week shows we have approximately an, an average spring. So that means we're probably going to have the normal amount of moisture associated with a, a typical spring in the Salt Lake Valley. The monthly temperature outlook shows that the month of April was supposed to be significantly below average, which so far it has been. And the seasonal temperature outlook shows that we should have an approximately normal spring. So uh, normal meaning you can probably look at uh, climatological data and figure out what we should expect as normal daytime highs, daytime lows. Now, the important part about this, these forecasts is how they relate to snowpack. So the first thing that we have to remember about snowpack is it takes not just temperature, but it also takes solar radi radiation to create an efficient melt cycle in snow. And the more direct the solar radiation is, and that means the higher, the, the higher in the sky the sun is, the faster snow will melt. So here we are in April, we're just past the 61 degree mark at this latitude, but we still have a lot of climbing for that sun to, to do in the sky before it reaches that maximum elevation that it will reach on summer, summer, solstice, summer solstice, excuse me, uh, June 21st. 
So what that means is the sun is still a little bit too low in the sky to do significant amounts of work on north facing aspects. So we're really looking for the sun to focus on those south facing aspects. Because again, as I pointed out, the Mill D drainage is a south facing aspect in Big Cottonwood Canyon and there is an amazing amount of snow there. We'd really like that to start melting off before the north facing aspects start to melt off. So when we look at seasonal stream flow forecasts, these are approximation because nobody really knows what's going to happen with weather. Maybe the forecast will come, maybe the forecast will hold true, and maybe there will be some disturbances that interrupt that forecast. But regardless, right now we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 to 250% of normal runoff events. And that can vary highly watershed to watershed. So here at Salt Lake County, we actually collect snow data. And the reason why we do that is to try to more accurately forecast very small scale events like a particular canyon. So as we've been collecting snow throughout the winter, we've put together a model that hopefully represents what we can expect out of runoff. Now in this model, this is for Little Cottonwood Creek again, this black line right here represents what we've seen in stream flow to date. We're hoping that this black line starts to rise fairly soon and we don't follow a cool pattern keeping this black line down here at the bottom of the expected flow range. The reason why we don't want to see that is because if we keep cool temperatures and cloudy skies, the snowpack will not start to melt until the end of spring. When that happens, the sun is high enough in the sky, it can melt north, south, east, and west facing slopes very efficiently all at the same time. And if that happens, we could experience uh, flows like we've never seen in Little Cottonwood, or at least like we have not seen in recent history in that creek. And we're hoping to avoid that. So the warming spell that we're supposed to see this weekend is actually really good news. And we should see this black line take an uptick as some of that south facing snow starts to melt. Big Cottonwood kind of has a similar story. The black line represents the uh, flows as of late and we had a warming spell about a week ago and that's what this little hiccup right here represents and right now we're, we're anticipating another warming spell coming this weekend and we're hoping this black line ticks up again we're hoping it starts to move up fairly quickly because big cottonwood has an amazing snowpack and again we'd like to we'd really like to see south facing and low elevation snowpacks start to melt before we really start to work on those north facing snowpacks again we're expecting possible discharge values that are greatly above where we are at flood watch stage and flood watch means this is where we have to start watching out for debris chokes under culverts and we have to start you know worrying about the clearance of bridges etc cetera, etc cetera. So where, where can we put all this water? Well, Utah Lake currently is just about 65% full. So there's a significant amount of storage capacity in our largest local reservoir. Other local reservoirs of note do have capacity. Uh, anyone who's passed by Parley's Creek as it flows through Sugar House Park or Tanner Park or any of those spaces where you can view that creek has probably noticed that the creek is elevated. That's because Salt Lake City is draining water out of its two reservoirs in that Parley's system to try to make room for the significant runoff expected to come this spring. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach us at Salt Lake County. Our number is on this slide. And we'd like to thank all of our partners who provide the critical data that we use to make these decisions about snowpack and flood control and uh, how to proceed with our operations in the spring. The Central Utah Water Conservancy District, NOAA, NRCS, U.S. Drought Monitor, Utah Division of Water Resources, and the Western Regional Climate Center. Thank you.